Today we're going to learn about the classification of plants. Now a few months ago we learned about how scientists, when they discovered new organisms, they would have to ask three questions. That first question was, does the organism's cells have a nucleus or not? Are they prokaryotic or eukaryotic? Next they would ask, is it a single-celled or multicellular organism? And then last, is it a producer or consumer? Therefore, can it produce its own food through photosynthesis or can it consume another organism for food? So we're going to look at producers, strictly plants. And plants are producers that can produce their own food through the process known as photosynthesis. Well, there are other producers, such as protists, and what's the difference between a plant and a protist? Well, plants will have stems, leaves, roots, and are multicellular. However, protists will be the complete opposite. They're usually single-celled with no roots, leaves, or stems. Plants are broken up into two categories. We have vascular plants, and we also have non-vascular plants. Vascular plants contain vascular tissues, which help the plant transport nutrients, water throughout the plant. Some of the typical examples are seed plants such as gymnosperms, angiosperms, and some non-seed plants such as ferns, club mosses, and horsetails. Non-vascular plants uh, have to use a different process considering they do not contain vascular tissues to transport nutrients and water throughout the plant. Uh, they use a process known as diffusion and osmosis to obtain their nutrients in water. Okay, so we're going to be looking at non-vascular plants first. Another word for this would be uh, the term bryophytes. And if you remember, non-vascular plants have non-vascular tissues. Therefore, they cannot transport water and nutrients around in the plant. Uh, they get their nutrients through the process of diffusion and osmosis. Now, as a result of this, the plants that are usually developed are small, simple, and are low-growing. Some specific examples may include mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. Okay. Now let's take a look at vascular plants. And if you remember, vascular plants have vascular tissues that help transport nutrients up and down the plant. Now this process is very similar to how our circulatory system works with blood. Okay, So vascular plants can divide into two groups. One, plants with seeds. The other, seedless plants. So let's look specifically at seedless plants. Seedless plants do not reproduce by the use of seeds and as well do not produce flowers. Instead of seeds they produce spores. Spores are units of asexual reproduction, usually single-celled, and can be produced by non-flowering plants, some bacteria, fungi, and algae. Some examples of seedless plants are ferns, horsetails, and club mosses. Okay, quick review on what we have so far for plant classification. Plants are divided up into two groups, vascular and non-vascular. If you remember, vascular plants have vascular tissues that help transport water and nutrients around in the plant. Now, vascular plants can be divided into two groups as well, seedless plants and seed plants. Now, our last classification is going to be with seed plants. These two groups can be divided up into gymnosperms and angiosperms. Gymnosperms are some of the oldest trees plants on earth. Gymnosperms are vascular plants that produce seeds usually on the scales of a cone. 
There is no flower and no fruit that will eventually surround the seed. Conifers, cycads, and ginkgos are the three main groups of gymnosperms. These include trees such as pine, fir, and spruce. And just a side note, because of the need for building lumber, gymnosperms are very important to our economy. Now, angiosperms are flowering plants that produce seeds enclosed in a fruit. Angiosperms have not existed on Earth as long as gymnosperms have, but they are now the most common form of plant life on Earth. There are two main groups, monocots and dicots, which we'll get into a little bit later. Okay, just so we understand plant classification, we'll go through it one more time. The first thing we ask ourselves is, does the plant contain vascular tissues or not for transporting water and nutrients around in the plant? If it does contain vascular tissues, then we have to ask ourselves, does it reproduce using a seed or not? If it does reproduce using a seed, we have to then ask ourselves, okay, does it produce a flower and seeds from an enclosed fruit? If it does, then it's going to be considered an angiosperm. If it does not, and it produces seeds on the scales of cones, usually, then it would be considered a gymnosperm.